Welcome to Finn, the Farber International News Network. Uh, down here now, and we're talking clean skies. I'm very happy to be joined by Ron, representing clean skies for us today. Um, some great things that we can see here on the clean skies uh, stand, part of the European Commission. Uh, explain to me, Ron, uh, what the Clean Sky Initiative is all about. Sure. The Clean Sky Program was launched under what's called the Seventh Framework Program for Research and Innovation of the European Union, which the European Commission sponsors and monitors, and it's a public-private partnership. It was created to develop technology, to mature it, to take on more risk and to prove them and accelerate their rate of adoption in the marketplace, particularly where it concerns things that will bring fuel efficiency, energy efficiency, and help aviation grow with a reduced environmental footprint. Now, if we fast forward, we're in Clean Sky 2 now because we're part of the new framework program called Horizon 2020. This will run from 2014 to 2024. And it's very collaborative, isn't it? Uh, you know, you, you work with the stakeholders and you have universities involved and small businesses. Absolutely. I, I would say at every level because being a public-private partnership, the investment from the business community along with research centers, academia, actually is greater than that of the public and the governance of the joint undertaking, it has a supervisory board or a governing board, consists of the major industrial partners and the European Commission on behalf of the EU. But then when we look at participation, we have a kind of a tiered structure like the aeronautical industry has. Okay, and you have three, uh, you're displaying three key initiatives here. Open Rotor, explain to me, is one of them. Explain the, uh, the background to that briefly. Sure. Open Rotor is a concept for a next generation propulsion system for aircraft. It was actually first trialed by NASA and the US manufacturers in the 1980s, uh, put away in a box because it showed a pretty big potential, 30 to 40 percent fuel burn improvement, but it was a very noisy technology, and noise is a very sensitive issue in airport communities, and I would say even politically. Uh, and fuel prices dropped, it became kind of like a second order, we'll look at that later. When we took a fresh look at this around about 2005, 2007, fuel prices were high, and I think if you look at finite resources, they will only go up ultimately, even if there's kind of always this kind of ripple effect in the short term. And what we've discovered through the Clean Sky program, and I would stress that only through a program approach with six, seven, eight years of funding continuity and uh, commitment from the industry to pursue this agenda, what we found is that there is actually up to 40% fuel burn reduction, even compared to aircraft uh, coming off the production line uh, as, less as, you know, as, as, as few as five to 10 years ago. But more importantly, by optimizing this design, engines using this open, as you can see, blades without a duct around them, open technology, if those blades are designed to exacting standards and very carefully in terms of aerodynamic flow, the noise actually can be less than engines that are currently being developed for the next generation of aircraft. So we can reduce the noise and get the 40% of fuel burn reduction. So we're having our cake and we're eating it too. So that's very exciting. I know you're doing a flight trial on the laminate wing this year, but you unveiled here at Paris the uh, the racer. Tell me just something briefly on that. That's a that, that's a really cool project. That's part of the Clean Sky 2 program, the follow-on program, and it is perhaps a little bit less geared towards um, you know, fuel burn per se. What it is is a type of new helicopter vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that bridges the gap between a traditional helicopter and a fixed-wing commuter aircraft or a business jet even.